Hey, it's Elise Pickett with the Urban Harvest, and today we are going to be talking all about pepper plants. So pepper plants here in Florida can actually be grown year round. They are technically considered to be biennial, which means they're a short-lived perennial. They will usually last anywhere from two to four seasons before they kind of just fizzle out and die off. But for those two to four seasons, around two years or so, you can have bountiful and continual harvests of peppers throughout the growing season if they are well cared for. So that is what we are going to be talking about today is pepper plant care and a few tips to keep them happy and producing. A lot of my clients that I work with when I do uh, virtual consultations or in-person consultations or through social media, media, a lot of people will ask me, um, you know, I'm struggling with my peppers, I planted the peppers, the leaves turned yellow, I only got one pepper per plant, uh, the, they flowered, never fruited. A lot of people can have trouble with growing sweet peppers, especially here in Florida. Hot peppers? quite a bit easier to grow, but when it comes to sweet peppers, they're just not very well suited to our climate. They don't like the intense heat that we get and they succumb to pest pressure pretty easily. So one of the first tips I have for you when you're growing peppers, especially sweet peppers, is to pick your varieties wisely. There are large sweet peppers, like bell peppers, like you would find in the grocery store that can do well here. Carolina Wonder and Cal Wonder bell peppers are two varieties that have some resistance to nematodes and can take our heat a little bit better than some of the other varieties. But with those, you're still only gonna get a couple of peppers per plant at best. My personal preference is to not bother with the large bell pepper varieties. I personally choose to grow the sweet hot peppers. So when people started to notice, gardeners started to notice that the hot peppers like habaneros and jalapenos and all of these other delicious hot peppers thrived better in our climate, uh, they started crossbreeding for less heat um, through the peppers. So what they've come up with is what looks like a hot pepper, but it's actually got no heat to it. So this here is a Suave Numex um, sweet pepper. It looks like a hot habanero pepper, but it has zero heat to it. Just a nice flavor that you would expect from say a bell pepper. They are smaller, so you'll need more to equal the same large bell pepper you would purchase at the store, but they are super productive and abundant. So you can easily harvest two, three, four at a time to equal that one bell pepper and you don't have to deal with all of the problems and the constant replanting and tons and tons of space that you would need to grow that amount of bell peppers. Now the Suave Numex, the Arroz con Pollo, and the Aji Dulji are the ones that thrive best that I'm aware of in our climate for this kind of pepper. Those are the three varieties that I plant. Um, they are a little bit slow to germinate, just take note, don't get frustrated, but once they're established, you can see they are just absolutely prolific. And they will produce for multiple seasons, if not a year or two at least for you. So it's worth the wait in my opinion. If you're looking for the heirloom pepper varieties that I just mentioned or other varieties of heirloom vegetables that really thrive here in our Florida climate, I do have a seed shop on my website, which is a curated collection of vegetables that all grow really well here in Florida. So if you're interested in shopping that, I do have a link to my website down below. And if you're local to the St. Pete area, we even carry live plants that are organic and heirloom vegetables for growing out here in Florida. Peppers are a bit of a wimp when it comes to heat and 
clearly if these plants are going to be living for several seasons they are going to have to make it through our summers so I always plant my pepper plants in part shade. Uh, these get morning light, but they are under a pergola even, so maybe four hours of sunlight a day, that's all these plants get, and you can see how happy they are. Uh, they really thrive in that condition. I do have them in containers as well because they are uh, multiple seasons long. You don't want to plant them in your annual beds where you're constantly turning them over. And it also gives you the ability to shift them a little bit as needed in the winter months. So if they need a little bit more sun than what they would get um, in the summer compared to the winter light wise, or if um, there's a frost coming, they are frost and freeze sensitive, you're able to easily pull them under a patio or potentially into a garage or even inside the house if need be overnight. Um, so planting them in containers and placing them in a part shade environment will give them the perfect conditions to thrive. Pepper plants really like nutrients. Um, they're kind of nutrient hogs. So to keep them happy throughout the growing season, I will usually alternate worm castings and Epsom salts um, as a fertilizer. I don't typically do uh, liquid fertilizers all that often, I will on occasion. Um, I usually just like to side dress the plants. I do have a video that discusses side dressing or top dressing your plants midway through the season, so if you're interested in learning more about that, check out the link above. Now, why Epsom salts? I get that question a lot. Um, with peppers and tomatoes and eggplants, the nightshade family, um, they are sensitive to magnesium deficiencies. That's what causes a lot of fruit issues, so like blossom end rot, that kind of thing. Uh, so when you use Epsom salts, you are putting in magnesium sulfate, um, two nutrients that the pepper plants really love. So what I will do is usually um, top dress about once a month uh, with a tablespoon or so per plant um, around the base of the plant and that keeps them nice and happy. You can do a foliar spray if you prefer, which is a liquid soluble, water soluble fertilizer um, by mixing about two tablespoons into a gallon of water and spraying over the entirety of the plants. Um, and either way will get them the nutrients that they need. But it is important, especially because they are growing in a container more often than not, um, and they're growing over in the same soil over a very long period of time, giving them consistent nutrients to replenish what they're using up out of the soil is really important for pepper plants. The sweet hot pepper plants that I mentioned are much better at surviving pest pressure. Um, they're not going to typically die from it, but that does not mean that you will never experience pests on your pepper plants. Even these guys, which are quite hardy and well suited to our climate, will get aphids and mealybugs um, and white flies. So you will have to kind of keep an eye on it. Um, and they're usually easily checked as long as you stay on top of things. I personally use an integrative pest management approach for the most part. Um, I do have a full one hour course that I put up on YouTube for that. So if you're interested in learning more about a hands-off pest management technique that is pollinator friendly and beneficial insect friendly, check out the link above and you can learn all about that wonderful, wonderful technique for managing pests in the garden. But if you need quick relief or if you've decided the plants have gotten to the point where it is out of control and you will lose the plants if something isn't done right away, then you may need to use a one-time um, use approach to managing the pests. Um, there are different um, soap and water sprays that you can utilize. Um, I have found a product that I'm really happy with. It's Earth's Ally Pest Control. Um, so if you need a quick fix, it's essential oil based and you can use that on the pepper plants to take or knock down the um, pests that you're dealing with. It's um, quite well suited for white flies, which are a little bit harder to manage than aphids. 
Now these plants here do have some aphids on them right now, but rather than spraying, I'm just going to essentially blast them with a hose. It will remove the aphids from the plants because they're soft bodied and not able to move very well. Um, and that will easily knock it down to proportion so that the beneficial insects in my garden can take care of the rest of the aphids that do remain on the plant. Um, I don't necessarily recommend um, blasting aphids with water if you are growing in a raised bed garden because it will just knock the aphids from the, the plants that they're on to the ones, uh, the neighbors that are right next door. But because these are in a container, I can easily take the aphids off of the plants without worrying about spreading them elsewhere. Growing sweet peppers in Florida doesn't have to be hard. Uh, if they are put in the right location and you select the right varieties, you will be able to easily grow sweet peppers for your home vegetable garden uh, like nobody's business. Nice and prolific and easy to manage. If you found this video helpful, make sure to head on down below and give it a thumbs up. And while you're down there, make sure to subscribe to the channel so you're alerted every time a video comes out on Florida vegetable gardening. Happy gardening!